Mistakes are going to happen in Odoo. There's really no way to avoid that. But that doesn't mean we need to get sucked into checking every single transaction. Not only will that likely drive you crazy, but you're really just spot checking. You can't check everything. Depending on the mistake you missed, it could cost you thousands of dollars. Thankfully, there's a simple tool that we can use to catch these mistakes. Tools like this have been around forever and bigger companies have whole departments that are focused around this area. Now, you probably don't need a whole department for this, but you do need this tool. Throughout my career, this has been an essential piece of what I do day to day. So I'm gonna show you how this tool works, how to use it effectively, and how to make it even better. And be sure to stick around to the end because the last piece is arguably the most important for making this work the best for your company. So, what is this tool exactly? And what does it do? Well, let's get into how it works because it's actually pretty straightforward. It's called the auditing tool. And it's basically like having security cameras in your system. It helps you to see what's important to you. Take, for example, somebody coming into a sales order and changing the price on a product, dropping the price of the sales order by thousands. That would suck, right? But as we all know, things like this happen in business, not because anyone is intentionally messing anything up, quite the contrary. But we need to be able to see what people are doing so we can catch mistakes like this. So the audit trail records what happens, when it happened, who did it, and what the value used to be before they changed it. But how exactly does this work in Odoo? Well, let's go ahead and dive in and look at our little security camera system. Let's hop into a sales order. So we come into sales, go to sales order 32. And if I zoom out a little bit, we'll be able to see the chatter on the right hand side. So you've probably seen messages like this where it's saying sales order created or if I come into this and say cancel it goes ahead and says Mitchell admin came in here and canceled this at 9:22 a.m. our security camera tracked this so I can see it later and if I didn't want Mitchell admin to cancel that sales order I'll be able to go back and fix it now I don't want to have to come into every single sales order and look at this that would be ridiculous. It's like watching only one camera at a time. That's not efficient. And that used to be all that Odoo had for you on the face of it. But in recent versions, they've added the audit trail. So Odoo's made this a little bit complicated just because depending on the version, your audit trail may not already be enabled. So we want to go to settings. And then up top, just go ahead and search audit. This is a different setting. We're not going to enable this right now but normally you're going to see audit trail we want to check that box and save just to make sure we have the audit trail now that you got it let's move forward so if we hop into the audit trail we can see hey i've got a lot of changes here and it's not just one transaction at a time i can see mitchell admin created some contacts he came in here and created some bank accounts I can see everything. We're covering a ton here, right? If you've been watching a while, you know that I try and cram as much as I can into each video. But there's so much more I'd like to tell you about, guys. So if you'd like to hear about it, go ahead and sign up for my newsletter. The link's in the description below. Now, back to the audit trail. And I say everything, but that's not exactly true. Firstly, depending on the version of Odoo you're in, if we go into this, add a custom group, and look at our related document model, we're only getting changes to our chart of accounts, changes to our journal entries, uh, changes to our companies, and changes to our contacts. That's really not everything. Now, I get it. Odoo is trying to be helpful and trying to say, hey, this is the stuff you really care about, right? But I don't really like people telling me what I care about, so we're gonna open this up a bit. And yes, this is the beginning of the make it even better part, so strap in. The first thing that we're going to do is open this up so we can see all the changes that we're tracking. So for that, we're going to click our little monkey, get into developer mode, and then go into studio. Once we're there, we're going to go into edit menu. We're going to find our audit trail, which is down here a little bit. Okay, see this guy right here, audit trail. We're going to click the pen and paper. We're gonna go up to the action right here, click the little box with the arrow pointing up. And then you see this domain value? This is actually a filter on our menu here of what we can see, okay? And if we go a little bit to the right, you can see, well, a little bit faster, 
it's saying the model needs to be in this list. So you can see it's got account move, which is our journal entries, account account, and then it's got our tax, which we haven't seen any of yet, and then it's got our carton tax and our companies. Well, we don't want it limited down to that. So what we're going to do is trim this guy up, okay? And we're gonna get rid of this guy right here. So all we're gonna leave in the filter or domain is this message type equals notification. So clear that up so it looks like this. Go ahead and save, save, confirm, close out, and we're gonna test this real quick. Go ahead and go up top, and we're gonna do that same custom group that we did before. So scroll down, and we wanna find that related document model. And you can see we've really opened this up. In fact, now we can look at that sale order, and we can see what I did just earlier, which is great. Now we're gonna go in and make this view that much more useful so it doesn't take us forever to see what's going on. For this, we're going to go back into Studio and I'm gonna create some little groups to make this nicer for me. So we're going to go into Views, we're going to go to Search, and we're gonna come over here and I'd like to be able to group by author, which I'm gonna change the name right there and just put it as user because that's really what this is. And we're also going to come in here and say, I wanna be able to group by model here so I can see what they've done in which model, okay? That really opens it up for me there. So now when I come in, it's super easy for me to come in and say, okay, I wanna group by day first and we can see, all right, it's the 13th of August. Once I've got that, I want to group by user. So I can see, okay, on the 13th of August, Odubot's been really busy. Uh, Mitchell Admin has been too. So I'll probably look into that real quick. And beyond that, I can say, hey, let's see which model they were interacting with there. So coming into it, I can see, hey, uh, I've got Mitchell Admin. He's done a ton in my analytic accounts. Um, he's been doing some journal entries. All stuff that's that's totally fine. I mean, for this sort of thing, I'm just looking at the top level and saying, okay, do I want this person interacting with this, right? So if I see that somebody is messing with products that shouldn't been, that's gonna be something that I look into more deeply. So this is great. In fact, you're probably thinking, wow, I'm totally set now. But there's one piece that you may have missed. Remember the example I gave earlier about somebody changing a unit price and that being a problem for us? Well, being the difficult person that I am, I actually did that. And you can see it right here, or at least you can see the effect of it. We don't actually see that the unit price changed. So I have a confession to make, guys. I thought that with the audit trail, you could essentially add any field to it with a little bit of elbow grease. And I still think that's the case, but it's not as plug and play as I'd like it to be. It's not something that I'd feel comfortable sharing with you guys because I'm not confident that it would continue working for very long. But in the hopes that some of you are a little bit more creative than me and a little bit more technically minded, I'm gonna share my solution with you anyway because it works a lot of the time. So I used to think that we were blocked by only one thing. And that one thing is a setting on the field. So we go into Studio, we go to Edit List View, and we come to Unit Price here, okay? And we're gonna scroll down and go into More. Well, if this guy's a zero, we're not going to get a tracking value, which is what populates the audit trail. So normally what I do, and what I did here, is I added a related field that's just basically this unit price. And then I come into this and I go to more and I make it so I can enable order tracking because you can't change this on a base field, but essentially I'm just saying, hey little field, go ahead and do whatever our price per unit does. But now we get to the problem that I didn't quite realize we had. And I'm frustrated because again, Odoo could have made this process a whole lot easier if they understood how critical an audit trail is to a company. Anyway, the problem is this. This model right here, if we go into it, does not have mail thread or mail activity. That stops us from having any chatter. And the audit trail is built on the chatter, which is just 
everything you see on the right hand side of a record in form view. So we can't get around this. We can't change this unless we are able to do third party apps, which is only something that's available in ODSH or self hosted. So those of you that are online don't get that. So for those of you that are more advanced than me, I'm just going to ask for a little bit of help because maybe you know something that I don't. So the idea that I had was to create basically a shadow model. So something that for every record in sales order line, we'd have another record in this other model be a custom model so I could go ahead and turn on the chatter and then I could have whatever fields I want to have tracked as a related field in there and I would stick on order tracking for those now that would be a bit of a long video to go through that and I'm happy to do it if people see value in that but I want to see if anybody else that's watching this video has a better solution I'd love to hear it please go ahead and drop it in the comments below if you have it I think it would help a lot of people all that being said if I have a custom field that I want to throw into this, so I'm going to throw this in as a character field, I can easily track any custom fields. So I can come into this and I can say sales order nickname, which is a silly use case, but most of mine tend to be. And then we come into this and we say, okay, sales order nickname, I'm going to go to more and I'm going to turn on my ordered tracking and save that. Now, when I come out here and I say the best one and save that, you can see it's tracked over here. And if we go into our audit trail, it's also tracked here. So you still have some flexibility, but some of this, you're just going to have to work with it. Now, Again, if the model already allows for tracking values, you can do anything in there, right? So on the sales order, I could add anything that I wanted to to be tracked. But on the sales order line, it's just not going to work. So you have to kind of play with this and try and set up the audit trail so that it covers your bases fairly well. But sadly, it's not a perfect tool just yet. So the audit tool is a great functionality to have, but it's kind of like having an ambulance at the bottom of a dangerous cliff, right? We really wanna have a railing at the top of the cliff to help our users not make mistakes in the first place. So next week, there's gonna be a video right up here that you can click to go and find out how you can prevent users from making errors rather than just catching them when they happen.